Father, we thank you for your presence here. Thank you because we can win in hopeless situations. Thank you because we can keep hope alive. Receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Help me this morning. That the word will be simple. It will go out as a blessing and a refreshing. And take all the glory in Jesus' name. Let me quickly mention that um, from the 2nd to the 12th of August again, we do have another medical outreach. We have... Um, uh, we have professionals coming in from the USA and uh, anything from chest down. If you need surgery, these are experts. You can always come. Let's see how we can be of help to you. Praise the Lord. Act actually, even now, they're already screening people. So you may want to go there anytime. Uh, thank you again for this privilege keeping hope alive. This morning, I'll be speaking on the topic, winning in hopeless situations. Uh, there are so many scriptures, so some we will not read. You just read them at home. Um, Acts 27 from verse 20, the Apostle Paul was in a very serious, hopeless situation. Acts 27, 20, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us. All hope, somebody say all hope, that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. The word of the Lord is blessed. One of the keys is that be mindful of the prophetic blueprints for your life and season in the midst of hopeless situations. Be mindful of the prophetic blueprints for your life and season in the midst of hopeless situations. You know, Paul said, there stood by him an angel of the Lord. And the angel said to him, you must be brought before Caesar. All of us as ministers, as children of God, there are moments, there are encounters, there are landmarks that happen. Where you know you met God. I'm sure all of us can point to a time and say, this in my life was God. So for Paul, in the midst of the loss of hope, the angel came and said, listen, you must be brought before Caesar. That means this storm is not going to take your life. Can I get an amen, somebody? The situation you are going through now is not going to take your life. It may seem like all hope is lost, but your ministry is not completed until you see that Caesar. I want to say to a child of God today, what God has shown you prophetically is going to happen. This season will not consume your dream. Is there a witness in the house of the Lord right now? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be unto God, which always caused us to triumph in Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.14 now thanks be unto God, which always caused us to triumph in Christ and make manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. I want to say to you that we are called to triumph and we're going to triumph in this situation in the name of Jesus. 1 Timothy 1.8 This charge, 1 Timothy 1.8 This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. There are prophecies that have gone ahead of you. There are visions that have gone ahead of you. It's for us to wage a good warfare. On the 1st of October 2020, I was in the city of Calabar. Maybe this will encourage you. I was in the city of Calabar with one of my sons in the Lord. About 6 a.m. in the morning at the hotel we were in, suddenly I, I saw the map of Nigeria. If it was sitting down, you can understand. With the land, everything sitting down, facing me like this. Well, like that. The map of Nigeria was facing me. And suddenly, I saw Jesus, the Lord Jesus, 
standing to that Lagos end there, saw his face. And suddenly, he turned to the face of a lion. And he began to run from that direction into the country. And the word of the Lord came to me, he said, for the sake of Zion, I will not hold my peace. I want to say to you, whatever is happening now, the lion of the tribe of Judah is roaring and is running into this nation and there shall be a, a significant turnaround in the destiny of this nation. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. Can I get a loud amen in the house of the Lord? So be encouraged, child of God, this morning. Servant of God, be encouraged. Be mindful of those prophetic blueprints. For Paul, he said to him, listen, you are, going to, you are going to fulfill your destiny. It looks like everything is over, but it's not over because you are here. I also want to say to you this morning that God has made you the spiritual captain of the ship. You are sailing in by virtue of your calling as an ambassador. God has made you the spiritual captain of the ship. You are sailing in by virtue of your calling as an ambassador. Acts 27, 23. He said, They have stood by me this night, the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. Amos 3, 7. Let's turn to it. Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Surely the Lord will do nothing. Paul said, Paul was the least person on that, on, on, on board that ship. He was a slave. He was a prisoner. But when God was going to speak, he looked for the ambassador he has there. You may feel insignificant right now. But I want to tell you, when heaven is thinking of Kaduna, thinking of Nigeria, heaven is thinking about you. Heaven is thinking that I placed a man there. You are not a nobody because nobody knows your church. Nobody knows your family. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ and angels are assigned where you are concerned. And because angels are assigned where we are concerned, we are going to have the victory in the name of Jesus Christ. It looks hopeless. It sounds hopeless. But our God is not hopeless. I said, our God is not hopeless. You know, the angels are commissioned concerning us. He said, the angels will accompany, defend, and preserve you. I have had, <laughs> that's Hebrews um, 1, 13 and 14. Isaiah 63 verse 9, you can write it down, Isaiah 63, 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. And he bare them. And he carried them all the days of old. Isaiah 63, 9. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. I want to say to you, servant of God, you have angels working with you and your ministry. Only a few of us have them. I say you have angels working with you and your ministry. I say you have a everybody here has, has an angel sitting with him. Because when you were born, you were sent here because how important you were to God. God sent you with an angel to come down here. You are not born like a commoner. When, when, when royalty is given birth, the press will be there. When you were born again, when you came into this world, even when you were born, Jesus said, the, the angel behold the face of the father. For every human being, God sends angel to help you. Those angels are not small angels. Angels. They are big powerful beings. And I want to say to you, whatever is happening, Psalm 91 says he amplifies says the angel will accompany, defend, and preserve you. Even in this season, you shall be preserved in the name of Jesus. We had one challenging season like that. And we, I was in our Bible school hall and I saw this huge angel. I just knew he was wearing Ankara, but I knew it was an angel because his shoulder was at the decking. I said, which kind of human being can have shoulder at the decade? You know, this guy's an angel. These guys are around more than we think. The angels encamp around about you. That means there's a camp around your house. Some angels have moved in. One man of God came to see me. He came to my house. He was spending some days in our house. And when he came to the door, to the front, to the, you know, he was talking to some people. You guys are doing well here. Yeah? I said, man of God, what, what are you doing? He said, ah, the angels are in front of the door. He's talking. I said, eh, you have them too. I was praying for one man of God, one senior minister in my house. He came and suddenly me and him were in the living room praying. He said, man of God, did you touch me? I said, I did not touch you. He said, one heavy hand touched his back. I said, look at my hand. It's not big. 
I want to say when that your angel, the reason you are still here today is because the angel of the Lord has watched over you. The reason they could not terminate your life, you have been through the valley, you have been through the fire, you've been through so many things, but you are here today, man of God, woman of God, you are here today because God said your assignment is not over and I declare over your life that your assignment is not over. No demon power will take you out before your time. They may surely gather not by me, but whosoever gathers against you, they shall fall for your sake. I prophesy it. I declare it over your life. I declare it over your destiny. You believe me? Give him a shout in the house of God. Somebody pray to me. Please be seated. I was on a flight from uh, Leeds. I was through Charles de Gaulle in France. Huh? I didn't know you broke and fear. The runway was flooded at Charles de Gaulle. They made an approach. They would go and come back. Everybody started praying. Most people that normally don't pray. Say, ah, what's going on here? And the Lord said, I'm with you. I'm on this flight. So you are going to land safely. There was one I was coming from Lagos. In the night, God showed me a vision around 2 a.m. that the flight crashed. I said, God, let me buy a Buja ticket. <laughs> <laughs> if they show you something, you go use wisdom now. <laughs> you don't leave your brain behind. He said, fly it. I said, Lord, are you sure? I said, fly. But I prayed for like two hours. Because oh. ah. <laughs> I was not, I prayed for like two hours. Then my eye cleared. Nobody again. I said, okay, God. As we're approaching this our airport here, I was just telling myself that, ah, that vision where I see, say, where I pray, 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 till they break. The thing not happen. The guy was about, like drama, suddenly the guy left the wrong way into the grass. It was airpiece. Tim was you come and see prayer. Uh, people were praying. I just sat down there. I said, I said, you can't crash. The Lord told me to enter this way. For my sake, you will get back to the road. I want to say for your sake, Nigeria will get back to the road. I want to say for your sake, you will get back to where you are supposed to get to. I want to say for your sake, it shall be well with this city. For your sake, it shall be well with this land. You believe that? Lift your head and shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 12. From verse 26 to 29. I would like to read it briefly, quickly. The kingdom of God is unshakable in the midst of the shaking. Because heaven declared your victory before the contest. The kingdom of God is unshakable in the midst of the shaking. Because heaven declared your victory before the contest. If you go to um, Hebrews 12, now verse 26. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying. Yes once more I shake not the earth only. But also heaven. And this word yet once more signify the removing of those things that are shaking. As of things that are made. That those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore we receiving a kingdom. Which cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. With reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I said the kingdom of God is unshakable in the midst of the shaking. Because heaven declared your victory. Hallelujah to Jesus. This kingdom is unshakable. This kingdom is unshakable. You know, in 2019, towards the, on the 3rd of November precisely, 2019, I had a visitation of the Lord. Just summarize it. He came and opened the gate of the church, Jesus himself. And he said to me, I have come to open the ship gate. But then 2020, there was lockdown. You say you open gate, they lock it. I said, God, you say you open ship gate, now lockdown, we can't even come out. And I began to, you know, sometimes God will give you a word, you start wondering, it doesn't make sense. But the Lord said it to me before the lockdown. And then that same year, he talked about shaking. He said he's going to shake I didn't even understand it fully myself. But then he told us, he said, you will not pay with your life. Say with me, I will not pay with my life. What Jesus has paid for with his blood. Say it one more time. I will not pay with my life. What Jesus has paid for with his blood. It didn't make sense to me. It did not make sense to me. 
But do you know one thing? With that lockdown, on our mission work, some of you don't know, we do a lot of mission work, frontline missions into places you don't want to mention and nations you don't even want to talk about. We saw a 30% growth in the lockdown. Which means with all the madness, people were looking for God. I'm telling you the truth. People were looking for God. I mean, God, see, see the kingdom cannot be shaken. Satan can do brick, 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 but he cannot shake God. He's a created being. He's subject to God. He's subject to the word of God. He's subject to you because you are also a God. Small G. Jesus said you are God. Small G. Under the big God. Hallelujah. The kingdom cannot be shaken. The kingdom cannot be shaken. Now, I want to read from the, amplif uh, from the message translation, Hebrews 12, from verse 25. In fact, let me um, go to 27. Hebrews 12, 27. The phrase, one last shaking, means a thorough house cleaning. Getting rid of all the historical and religious junk. So that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. Let me read it again. The phrase, one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning. Getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. Do you see what we've got? An unshakable kingdom. And do you see how thankful we must be? Not only thankful, but brimming with worship and deeply reverent before God. For God is not an indifferent bystander. He's actively cleaning house, touching all that needs to burn, and he won't quit on it. It's all cleansed before God, because God himself is fire. Wow. The shaking is house cleaning, booth camp training, wilderness experience for kingdom advance. The shaking is house cleaning, Booth camp training, wilderness experience for kingdom advance. Hallelujah to Jesus. When the lockdown came, you know, you couldn't do anything. Everything was hard. People had all over the world. The, 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 you know, the banking, the movie, the aviation industry, everything was shaking. But for we, the church, when there's a shaking like this, he says it's house cleaning. Have you watched those movies where they're getting rid of clutters in the house? Where a lot of clothes, everything is so, they, everything will just pour out. When God brings you into a quiet season, or you call it a wilderness experience, is to get things out of our lives that should not be there. Can I get an amen, somebody? The city, city, uh, situation we are facing as a nation today is a kind of wilderness experience. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness but when he came out of that wilderness, his fame spread everywhere. I want to say what you are going through now is a launching pad for what God will do through you. Amen. Oh, God does not waste your pain. He does not waste your sorrow. He's going to launch you to another level in the name of Jesus. Amen. All those great men. Moses also was in the wilderness. Even Apostle Paul was in the wilderness. When we go through this situation, God wants to clean house. He wants to, he wants to get out things in my life that should not be there. How many of you know there are some things that need to be cleansed in our lives? You know, when they want, when you want a, a, a river to take more, or, 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 or you know, to, to be able to carry more vessels, they will dredge it. They will remove things out of it so that it can be free. The Lord will free your life in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will free your life in the name of Jesus. When Paul had that situation in Acts 19, you can write it down, verse, verses um, 8 to 10. When people oppose Paul, they opposed him. The Bible says he went to the school of Tyrannus. Acts 19.10. And this continued by the space of two years. So that all they which dwelt in Asia had the word of the Lord Jesus. Both Jews and Greeks. I want to say to you. Even in this season we as ministers must be building. Not converts but disciples. Hallelujah. A convert is somebody who just changed his mind. A disciple, the Greek word means a disciplined follower. We need to adjust what we are preaching. So, if all we are preaching is that you will never have problem if you get born again, change it. Because they will not understand what they are going through now. You have to start adding many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of them all. Come on, somebody talk to me. If you are preaching today that wants to give your life to Christ, your, your what do you call it, your, your, your Ford recovery, I mean, what is, I mean, 
It will come tomorrow. You better change it and tell me that do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Otherwise, you come and ask pastor, pastor, did it not happen? No. In fact, there's diminishing return. But we need to let them understand there's a devil out there that is opposing the thing. A disciple wants to follow Jesus in good time and in bad time. Oh. It's like marriage. If you marry somebody that is only following you in good time, when bad time comes, he will leave you. But real person, real wife, oh, he will stay with you. Good time, bad time. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Make up your mind about that. Don't let the pressure of the time make you start questioning the, the will of God, the, 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 the plan of God. Hallelujah. Hmm. All right. In the, same, in the same line, building an altar in hopeless situations will cause God to prophesy over you. Genesis 22. I said building an altar in hopeless situations will cause God to prophesy over you. You know the story in Genesis 22 from verse 9 to 14 about Isaac being offered. I mean, <laughs> oh, wow, 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 wow. Do you know God prophesies over those who build altar? God could have asked that guy for a thousand cows. All of his herd. But he said, your son that you love, talking about Isaac, Sometimes there's pain in the offering. Sometimes there's pain in your service. Some of you are serving God now. It's not convenient to serve God. But let me tell you something. When you do it, God, God will prophesy over you. And when God prophesies over you, he will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. He put the boy on the altar. They were going together. They saw the place afar off. When they got there, I'm sure the boy he was used to sacrifice. He was used to sacrifice. But here, the wood, the knife, and everything, the fire. He said, God will provide for himself. Allow a sacrifice. Let me quickly add to you this to what I'm saying. If you own that ministry, then you need to provide for yourself. What was Abraham saying? He said, my son, me, myself, I'm owned by him. You, yourself, you are owned by him. When I get there, he will provide for himself. Stop trying to provide for yourself. Ask the owner of the work to provide a sacrifice for himself. And when he got there, he put the boy there. The boy thought, that boy is a very good boy. If he's some of us, <laughs> it's okay. When the father said, climb the altar. That's what he said, daddy. I've been following for a long time. But this is the only one time that I'm going to disobey your commandment, daddy. Somebody will give that father a karate kick right there. But that boy never talked. He believed like his father. Father said he knew that God could raise this boy from the dead. At the end of that, God said, by myself have I sworn. He began to prophesy. I want to say to a child of God this morning that your sacrifice, the pain in your sacrifice is not for nothing. Because in this day and age, you have continued to serve and give your best in difficult situations. Heaven is prophesying tomorrow. Abraham heard about redemption. He heard about Jesus coming. And I want to say to you, child of God, your sacrifice is not for nothing. Heaven is about to reward you in a way you don't know. Can I get an amen? in the house of the Lord. Do you remember Mary before Jesus was going to be buried? I mean, when they went to the feast, she broke the alabaster box. Began to wipe his, you know, the oil. And people were complaining. Jesus said, wherever this gospel is preached, she will be mentioned. Your sacrifice in this season Heaven is recording it. Mary, we are still talking about her today because there was pain in the offering. Sometimes the sacrifice is difficult. Sometimes the terrain is hard. But if you stay put there, heaven will prophesy over you. And when God prophesies, no man can cancel that word. Is there an amen somewhere in the house of the Lord today? Glory to God. Glory to God. Building an altar in hopeless situations will cause you to hear the heartbeat of heaven and operate in his divine frequency. Say with me, building an altar in hopeless situations 
will cause me to hear the heartbeat of heaven and operate in his divine frequency. Now, Genesis chapter 8 from verse 20 to 22. You know the story. You know the story. There was a flood and there was a lockdown. The flood came. Everybody died. It was a horrible, horrible story really. Can you imagine? God forbid. Flood comes. All animals are dead. You see your neighbors dying and you are in the ark and the ark is going up. In fact, you will need medical help after the flood because psychologically you are battered. You have seen your neighbors dying, their animals dying. Only you and your family, you are floating in the air. When they did lockdown, let's be honest. When they say lockdown was over, what was the first thing you wanted to do? Market. Abby? Because food has finished. People are looking for even toilet paper. Like in America, everybody was looking for toilet paper. So I run all over the place. But what did this man do? Let's see what he did. Go to Genesis 8, verse 20. God commanded him and he did it. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said, somebody say, and the Lord said, in his heart, God didn't talk to Noah. But Noah had what God said in his heart. Sometimes there's pain. I'm sure the first thing he wanted to do was not to, to make sacrifice. I'm sure he wanted to take care of certain things. I don't know how I can be locked down in, in, in an ark for that length of time. But he brought the sacrifice. And God said in his heart. I want to believe with you this morning. That the sacrifice you are making. Is making you to hear the heartbeat of God. Have you had this experience in your life where you are about to do something and somebody goes there and does it for you. You wanted to pick something, somebody picks it and says, Daddy or Mommy, here it is. That person could hear the heartbeat of your heart. Your sacrifice is your worship. Your sacrifice is your, your giving. Your sacrifice is the time you spend in the presence of God. Bible says, He that cometh to God must know that he is. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to say that because you have been diligently seeking the Lord in this season, every pain in that sacrifice, heaven will remember it for you. I want to declare over everybody under the sound of my voice today that you will hear God clearer than ever before. God of heaven is going to intervene in your behalf in the name of Jesus. While I was praying this morning, I had a little vision. Before I forget it, I saw maybe it's a person or a ministry. They closed the door. Then they put chain and they put padlock. Totally locked down. We'll come to that towards the end because I believe I need to pray for you. If you feel that things have been changed, if I saw it so clear, if I can describe the color, <laughs> if it is your church, you, you let us know. Well, I can describe the color of the, of the thing, the, what is on that chain. But the God of heaven is about to turn it around for you in the name of Jesus. I said the God of heaven is about to turn it around for you in the name of Jesus. God said in his heart, and um, Noah heard God. You know, the same thing happened with Mary. Mary had God. Nobody knew. Jesus said, she, she's preparing me for my burial. How did she know Jesus was going to die? Many of them didn't even believe he would die. But Mary had God. You see, when you make, when you give God what is precious, when you break that alabaster box, you will begin to hear the frequency of heaven. Just like we heard earlier today, when we give our best in this situation, we hear, don't give God your, don't give God what is not precious to you. This is the time to stretch a little bit more. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Well, hmm. Personal devotion, intimacy, and staying full of the, of the spirit will help you navigate in hopeless situations. Personal devotion, intimacy, and staying full of the spirit. John 15, 4, Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. Mark 1, 35 to 37. Mark 1, 35 to 37. Jesus rose a great while before morning. He rose a great while before morning. Child of God, 
The Bible says, be not drunk with wine, but be continually filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual song. Ephesians 5, 18 to 20. Making melody in your heart. Jude 20. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. If you see somebody with a phone and a power bank together, that means that phone charger has a problem. Your power bank and your phone are always together. That means the battery needs healing. So you are moving with this. If it's in flat power bank with it, but you have a permanent power blank. It's called the Holy Ghost. When you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, let that prayer language come out of you constantly. Let it flow out of you. You see, you are charging yourself. You are in the frequency of the Spirit. That personal devotion, we had a lot about it already. Let's, let's keep that flow with God. Let, let, let's keep it going. Let, let's keep that flow going. Even our Lord Jesus, a great while before morning, he will get up to pray. Hearing God for yourself is critical in hopeless situations. Hearing God for yourself is critical. Don't just say, somebody said, it's time for you to hear God for yourself. Someone say, it's time for me to hear God for myself. In 1 Kings 13 from verse 11 to 20, you can write it down. 1 Kings 13, 11 to 20. You know the story of the old prophet in Bethel. The young prophet was told to prophesy against the altar in Bethel. He prophesied, but he died. You will not prophesy and die. You prophesy and live. Oh. But what was the guy's problem? Another older prophet came and said, Me too, I'm a man of God. Just do this, do this, do this. Don't. The, the things that you know you heard from God, you have to hold them there. Elijah had the voice of God when he was running from Jezebel. The Bible says, he covered himself like, wow. For me, I don't know about you. Hearing the voice of God is more important to me than food. Because I can't navigate this season without God. I cannot. I dare not. So that time with God is critical. Thank God for fathers in the Lord, but God has no grandchildren. Everybody can go to the mountain. I mean, we use that term. I use it myself. But there are certain things I can't do for you. You need to hear God for yourself. Because there's an old prophet that says, Oh, just come and eat the food. And the guy eats. And then at the end of the day, the lion killed him, killed, uh, and stayed there. The dead body was there. The body of the ass was there. The lion did not eat anything. That means it was a sign that you, you, you had God, but you chose to hear man. You will not move from where God has placed you. You are going to hear God for yourself in the name of Jesus. His prophecy came to pass, but he died. Because instead of spending that time and let me quickly, even though, just throw this in for, you know, to help us. There's a big difference between Old, time, Old Testament prophecies or prophets and New Testament prophets. Because in the Old Testament, the anointing only rested on the prophet, the priest, and the king. So when you needed to travel, you go to the prophet. Prophet, can I travel? He will say, mm, don't go. Can I marry? Mm, don't go. So people are still practicing that in the New Testament covenant. Everything you go to a prophet. Thank God for, I prophesy too sometimes. <laughs> wow. There was a woman many, many, many years ago. She was operating like this and I told her, I said, you need to stop that thing. I said, you need to stop that thing. Unfortunately, it's, it, 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 I mean, she just, the devil took her out. Our, our ministry is to confirm. God can give you a warning to give somebody. But don't, don't be in the habit of <laughs> teach people how to hear God. When I was an undergraduate, one of the things that used to touch me, when I see one of my classmates say, ah, I heard God. I used to look at them like, ah, ah, you this chinchini thing here, the God of heaven can speak to you. And I had a passion to be able to hear God. God will revive us in the name of Jesus. God will revive us in the name of Jesus. Listen to me, the way God will lead you as a child of God basically is by the inward witness. You will know in your heart, you have a check, you have peace, you don't have peace. I call it quarter quarter anointing. You know lies, L-I-C-E. If you have lies inside your shirt or your... Eh? You will be... When you want to do something, something inside this is scratching. Just leave it. You want to enter a bus, something is scratching. Just come and maybe kidnap us inside. <laughs> You don't need a prophet to tell you that there's a prophet in every child of God. The inward witness will speak. But if you don't keep the frequency, you will not know when God is speaking. 
All right. Uh, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our chairman says just fire on. But we need that. Sometimes it can be different between life and death. Just that lack of peace. That lack of... Mm. Mm. Don't do the investment. People have lost millions like that. Something is not making you, you are just uncomfortable. But some people will not do anything until a prophet come and say, don't set the Lord. No, 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 no. That's Old Testament. I'm not saying we can't do those. I do that a lot myself. But it should confirm what you already have. If you don't have it, keep it on the shelf. Maybe it will make sense someday. But many people live their lives on prophecy. You come to Cardinal. Prophet say, go to Cardinal. You get to Cardinal. They say, they are kidnappers. They cannot prophesy. Go to Lagos. When we get to Lagos, they are kidnappers. They are prophesy. Go to Patakot. So, if a prophet prophesies to you to come and go to Iraq, take the prophet along so that he can tell you when to come back. <laughs> For this season, we need fresh anointing. Psalm 92 verse 10. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. We need fresh oil. A fresh anointing like an ox will cause believers to stretch beyond their comfort zone. A fresh anointing like an ox will cause believers to stretch beyond their comfort zone. You know the ox plowing it's walking. It's walking all the time. I want to say to you, the greater one is on your inside and you can plow in difficult terrain. Apostle Paul says this, Matthew eleven twelve, 12, then 2 Corinthians 1, 8. Matthew eleven twelve, 12, the Amplified Classic says, Matthew eleven twelve, 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assaults, like we're seeing these days, and violent men seize it by force as a precious prize. A share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with the most ardent zeal and intense exertion. A share in the kingdom is sought with the most ardent zeal and intense exertion. Is that not, is that, are we not facing that today? We're feeling a lot of exertion. But Bible says that's how the kingdom comes. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know when I go to some place and people tell me they have problem I just laugh when they tell me they have problem I just laugh what I'm saying to you this bible we are reading people that gave us they used to throw them to lions but they are, we still have it today because they endure I didn't say they would throw you to lions I said they used to throw them <laughs> hallelujah to Jesus I was preaching somewhere in Romania, one some years ago, you know, they just came out of communism, and we had a police permit to hold the meeting. So you were holding the meeting. So the police came and said they cancelled the permit. Okay. So, so my host said we should go to one school, but it was outside one school. We were there, and then it began to rain. Rain, like you do. Ah! The devil came to me. So instead of sitting touch, so you are doing mission. How many black people are here? You are the only one. <laughs> Rain is beating you. Police is in front of you. Get your permit. Karambani akuya should have stayed. <laughs> ah, my head was jamming. So I so said, pray. If one of my friends from the UK flew in to be with me in that meeting, but you see, when you are under pressure, the anointing. On the inside will rise. The Bible says that when the when the when the lion roared against Samson, it says Samson tore the lion. He said there was nothing in his hand. Some of you things are roaring against you, but I want to say the anointing, the, you know, oil always rises to the top. If you take a bottle of oil down, you put it down in water, it will come to the top. Even in a river, it will float. I want to say there's an oil upon your life that even in this terrain, in this difficult situation, the oil of God upon your life, upon our lives, will rise to the, to the top in the name of Jesus. We are not going to be consumed in the name of Jesus. Suddenly we started praying. There was an old man that brought his daughter, granddaughter, I learned later. The man had, it was, it was, 
head was on the floor throughout the ministration. By the time he got up, the girl was 12 years old, deaf and dumb from birth. She began to hear and began to speak. At that time, the police started running to the meeting and asking us to pray for them. I want to tell you, those who are against us are coming to celebrate us. Those who are fighting us are coming to celebrate us. Because we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken. The anointing like an ox causes it to stretch. Paul said, he, he in another place, he said, he gave up hope of being alive. Some of, us have, some of us have been in that situation that all hope was gone. In 2 Corinthians 1, um, 8, verse 9, actually. But we had the sentence, verse 8. For we will not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia. We were pressed out of measure, above strength. In so much that we despised even for life. But we have the sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves. But God who raises the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death. And does deliver. In whom we trust. That he will yet deliver us. Child of God. He will yet deliver you. The anointing of an ox is on your inside. You are going to rise above the elements. In the name of Jesus. Exodus 1.12 But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The more they afflicted them, Exodus 1.12 The more they multiply. I want to say, you are going to multiply, you are going to increase in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's so much on my plate. I'm trying. Hallelujah. We'll give as much as we can. Amen. I want to encourage you also that you need to put on the whole armor of God and use the keys of the kingdom. Put on the whole armor and use the keys of the kingdom. Matthew 16, 17 to 19 says, um, And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever thing you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. The keys of the kingdom is revealed knowledge. The keys of the kingdom, they are revealed knowledge. He said, who do you men say that I am? Who do you say that I am? He said, you are Jesus Christ. The reward of God revealed in our hearts in this situation. These are the keys of the kingdom. And there are so many of them. You know, I was telling one of my pastors, I was trying to open a door in church, a big door, and he was struggling with the key. I said, Pastor, if that's the right key, no matter how big the door is, you just turn it one time. Even this situation we are in now, there are keys. We will have some time to touch some of them. There are keys we must use to turn it around. God never allows us to be in a situation where they, He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I know a sister that, that was shot three times and bullet fell down three times. 